Good morning, everybody. It's Riley here, and we are with the one and only Russell Nemitz from Western Ag Network. Today, we're going air drill hunting, spring planting, crop updating things. <laughs> You nailed it, Riley. <laughs> We're with the Department of Ag, Montana Wheat and Barley, and Montana Pulse Crop Committee. We're chasing air drills. We are chasing I air drills. I see one. Oh, yep, right John there. John Deere whoa, whoa, tractor. Whoa. Hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's way off there on the horizon. We gotta go get it. Anyway, for those of you who don't know who this guy is, which is probably not very many of you, because everybody knows who this guy is, this is Russell Nemitz. He's an ag broadcaster out here in the uh, just kind of Western US region, particularly Montana. And he was hired by Montana Wheat and Barley Committee, Department of Ag, uh, whatever other entities are in there, to produce these super awesome <laughs> spring planning update videos. And I'm the guy that he hired for some reason to be the camera guy, but you know what? We're getting it done and we're making some cool content. We're having a lot of fun up here. I'm very tickled to have Riley along on this trip. He's doing a great, great job. And uh, as the saying goes in the industry, stay tuned. We'll be back with more right after this. We started out dry. It's been dry all since last, since July 17th, we really, missed out on the rain showers. So some of the questions are, should we go, right? The ground is cold, but it's dry, we can go. Well, I guess we've kind of gotten after it. We started with our derm crop, put some derm in, and we switched over to lentils. And uh, we're finishing up with chickpeas now, so we've got a couple days of chickpeas left, and, and then we're gonna sit back and hope it rains. This year I started seeding derm, and then I transitioned into my yellow peas and seeded some large, large lentils, and then into rich leaves. And now I am uh, got done with flax right before the rain, and now we're into our spring wheat and finishing up with that. We're standing here right now. This is probably the best seeding conditions I've had all year. Hopefully they continue to get better. It takes rain to get more rain. So hopefully we finish and uh, all the crop comes up in rows and has that opportunity to get the next shower. The pulse rotation has really enhanced the, the derm crop we've raised, and we've raised some tremendous ones over the years. The pulse crops help break up some of the disease cy cycles, and as well as the, the derm crops help break up the disease cycles on the pulse side. And the two complement each other very well, and, and throw an oil seed in there, whether it's flax or mustard or canola, um, to help some of the weed challenges and, and disease cycles as well. But uh, at the end of the day, derm and lentils and peas are kind of the go-to for us. I think our, our ability to grow quality spring wheat and derm in northeastern Montana keeps bringing us back. There's no question about our quality, and I think everyone here enjoys being in northeastern Montana, producing a quality grain for the world to consume. Farming gives you that complete holistic, you know, you get to have your kids around and your wife and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. You don't do it for the checkbook, but for the, to be able to raise your kids and be around family and friends and in a small community, um, it's pretty rewarding. Okay guys, so I am terrible at consistently vlogging in the field when I'm doing commercial work. It was a really busy trip, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to pick the camera up, and half the time I did pick the camera up, um, the clips ended like this. I should probably not put this on the internet yeah, <laughs> at all. <laughs> so anyway, fantastic trip up to Northeast Montana. Got to learn quite a bit how some of those operations work out there and how they do their seeding and the types of crops that they're growing and the resiliency that they have despite some very dry conditions up there. Those guys need rain. So two more things that I can show you guys before we close out this video. Sorry, it's a short one today, but we're gonna talk a little bit about the grain labs and we're also gonna show you a little bit of behind the scenes on how Blake Rasmussen had his tractor cab set up with all his technology because I have a cool clip there too. So first, the grain labs. We got to check out a pretty cool grain lab in Plentywood, Montana. These are state grain labs and they're the only federally approved places in the state of Montana where 
you can get an official sample of grain. So basically the role that these play is it helps with seller and buyer confidence when making trade deals. So especially when you are exporting grain out of the state or country, you're gonna want basically that official stamp of approval that this wheat, for example, meets this protein standard and these other parameters. And that's what the State Grain Lab does. There's two locations. We visited the one in Plentywood. Anyway, we shot a quick 60 second video about the Grain Lab's 100 year anniversary here in Montana. And here's that. Uh, my name is Daniel Reamer. Um the Bureau Chief for the State Grain Lab. I'm with the Department of Agriculture. I've worked with them for a little under six years now. And the labs are the only federally licensed labs in the state. So any of our growers, producers, needing that certification to be able to ship out of country and support the world is gonna come through us for one of the ports. So we are it in Montana for the official certifications. Some of my work through manufacturing engineering, I've developed a number of processes that a number of operations, striving for zero defects and making sure everybody was grading, in this case, the same way, both labs, every person the same. The Montana Grain Standards Bureau was actually started in 1921, the Ford Building in downtown Great Falls. So that's quite a history, quite a legacy that I wanna protect and make sure we keep going. Okay, one last thing. You guys probably want a little bit more on that awesome Quadrac and Burgol air drill setup. Burgol, Borgol, Borgalt. I'm still figuring out how to pronounce that, but oh man, these air drills are so impressive. Really impressive. If you watch Mike Mitchell, you probably know all about them, but Northeast Montana runs quite a few of these units. So here's Blake Rasmussen to talk a little bit more about at least the tech setup he has in his cab. He has like four monitors. Let's figure out what each one of those things do. Um, you've got all these monitors and everything. Yeah. Um, Mess out in here, look at some stuff. Or? Yeah, basic overview of each. You don't have to go in depth because sure. I know how many menus some of these things have, yeah, especially right. in your... Uh, air drill <laughs> so yeah so if, uh, in our control center here what we're looking at we've got our pro 700 which is mostly just running our gps we're running a straight north south line um, pretty simple shows your fuel burn work rate um, so nothing real complicated there we've got our uh, uh, our ipad up here is is our Blockage monitor system. So every the top the top two rows are eight towers. We have eight towers with fertilizer. That's for our micro banders. And so it's in every sense, every single sensor has its own um, blockage. If, it, if they were blocked, they would turn red. Um, and then the bottom nine through sixteen is the that's the eight uh, seed seed runs. And so there's twice as many of those as there are micro banders. And, still only eight towers. So if one of those gets blocked, you typically block from, oh, possibly a rock, a chunk of fertilizer, oh, or something that got into your, blocked your tower. Um, and then moving down, we've got a camera. We just got some cameras. We're looking at the tank here. You can look into your, um, and let's go to the next one. Or you can see behind you if you're going down the road. And then finally, the, the, uh, X35 is the Borgo monitor here. That's the brains of your drill. Uh, so we've got, you can see what we're doing for putting down chickpeas and our front tank and pots and some urea and our sections, all the sections are on as we go down the field. That's auto section control, um, fan speed. Uh, it also tells you the RPMs of your rollers and we can take a look at our map and we can see how we're doing here. Just take a look at our field and gives you acres and here. So you can see if we can do about another 130 acres that we'll be out of uh, our fertilizer and need to, need to find the truck to fill up again. So. so we're coming to the end. We'll see our sections will turn off automatically for us. We're gonna hit this as they shut off. Let's shut the seed off, save on your seed cost. We'll hit raise the drill.
deserve it. So anyway, pretty awesome, right? Technology in ag these days, it's just awesome and it keeps continuing to get better. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video today. We'll be back with some more traditional vlog format content down the road, here and there throughout the summer, hopefully. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that when it does roll out. That's a button down here somewhere below this video. So click it, click that bell thing too. That'll like actually tell you right when the video comes out. So you can be like the first one maybe. Anyway, I gotta go get some other stuff done. I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys. See ya.